want to do a quick video on OpenSUSE Micro OS Desktop. Um, I've been like just through the moon uh, fanatic about Micro OS Desktop. Um, here's really the kind of the top three reasons why. Um, number one, you're getting the latest and greatest because it's based on Tumbleweed. Uh, two, even though it's rolling, you have this super stable system because it's immutable desktop and also you have rollbacks. Um, Tumbleweed as a rolling distro is stable as it is, um, but then when you throw in the immutability and the fact that you can roll back things, um, th like through the moon, e like even more appealing. Give me some of that. Um, and the fact that it's going all in on flat packs and like making it first class citizen um, and the software center enabled flat hub by default, you literally can boot into open to some micro OS desktop, download some flat packs. And that's really the most you'll have to do for most users to maintain your system. You just install stuff and then forget about it. Um, they have auto updates. Um, they're working on ways to make it a little more uh, nuanced and how they notify users to, uh, about those updates and, uh, when to apply it. But most of the time when you're going to shut down, it can apply updates there. Um, and if you really, really have to, you could layer packages, um, if there's not a flat pack for it, if you have an app that doesn't have a flat pack. You could install something, but those are things like maybe um, like a tail scale or something. Uh, you, you base that in. I know for uh, other VPN solutions, like uh, for my job, I use Cisco AnyConnect. And so I had to layer um, those kind of uh, 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 apps. So how to use it? Tumbleweed base ISO, burn it. Pick the, pick the environment, and then you have these things. Flat hub, if you ha uh, and if you really, really want to go crazy with your apps um, that are not flat packs and you have a bunch of them, uh, you basically can create a toolbox, which think of a toolbox as like a, and this is pretty, you know, I, 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 I don't even use toolboxes or distro boxes. Um, I, play, I dabbled, uh, but haven't really gone all in. But because uh, just by itself, this alone is just like, give me some of this. This is it. This is it right here. Install, no maintainability, auto updating apps. What what else do you need? For most users, no, I said for most users, casual average users, why bother? We, like, this is why Chromebooks have excelled for so long because they abstracted away a lot of this stuff on the back end and people just want to jump in their personal computer and get things done and do things. That's it. Um, so the fact that we can have that, that we could do it better is incredible. So, uh, in fact, it's again, based on tumbleweed is rolling at the latest and greatest. So you're not, you know, doing some snap, like six month release cycle. And then, you know, you, you may or may not get it. Uh, you're, you're always going to get it when it's ready. And you're not fighting with repos and PPAs and backports and all that kind of stuff. If you're on older, like Ubuntu or MX Linux or that kind of thing, you know, you're not fighting that whole uphill battle, which can sometimes cause system in, uh, uh, instability. So... So dawn of a new age, silver blue and micro OS desktop is it. Uh, I think personally, I think uh, micro OS desktop is uh, the leader in this, even though it may not get the coverage it deserves or, or should get. Um, probably because silver blue might, is, is newer, I mean, uh, older. Silver blue has more mind share probably. Um, and they kind of had jumped the gun on like a lot of uh, build a lot of things on uh, over over time. Um, but try Silverblue and try to install software. And 
go to micro OS desktop and try to install software there and tell me which one is more of a pleasant experience. Go ahead, uh, do it and tell me what, what would be more, even as a release candidate, what would be something that you can hand this off to your grandma or your um, casual user? Uh, I probably wouldn't give my grandma GNOME, probably the KDE, <laughs> but um, you still have this something that is, you set it, forget it, and you're done. Um, but going back to toolboxes, if you really want to go dabble, and this is where developers can have a heyday with this, you have specific environments you can, is, toolboxes are like a mini virtual machine, but instead of installing a bloated virtual manager, virtual, virtual box on your system and dedicating like, um, like two gigs of RAM or five gigs of RAM, six, you know, for it to just run something. Toolboxes is like a very, it's a, it's an image, sometimes a customized image, that small footprint. You install app, you do some commands and you can run the app as if it's native, but it's really, really running out of the toolbox. So most of the time it's text uh, console or, you know, text-based stuff that people use it for, for development. But um, people are running GUI apps through toolboxes as if it's native, it looks native, it feels native, it has access to the, to the you know, home directory, um, um, so if when you're working on files and dragging and dropping and the toolboxes work with that too. So I'm so if you were ever in need of something, you you know, you come here and you just love your Ubuntu world, but you want all these benefits, run a toolbox. Run a Ubuntu toolbox. Do your stuff there. Get your goods there. There's a specific version number of app that you just love because the one above like changed the UI and you hate it. Run a toolbox. Get the cake. This is, I think, you've got to summarize micro OS desktop is you get to have your cake and eat it too. Period. Anyways, that's my little rancy rant rant on micro OS desktop and why you should try it and why it's probably the best right now.